Hello and welcome to the third video in this Unit 5 series about the Enlightenment and Scientific Revolution and a million things. Here's the Enlightenment in action. Here's the unpacked standards. We will describe the French Revolution by responding to short prompts on flip video quizzes and reflecting on a simulation of revolution, which I think will be very cool. We will describe the expansion of the arts, philosophy, literature, and new technology by responding to short prompts on flip video quizzes. So here's the big picture for the French Revolution. The ideas of the Enlightenment and French participation in the American Revolution influenced the French people to view their government in new ways. They overthrew the absolute monarchy and established a new government. More democratic, at least. So, here's the causes of this revolution. There's social, political, and economic inequality. You can see over here, there's a system the French had called the Three Estates. And you got the first estate here, which is the, no, the clergy, and the second estate here, which is the nobility, you can see that they've got appropriate hats. And they are both standing on the third estate, which is just about everybody else. And here you can see that they're standing on a stone called taxes. So that's a, just a cartoonish depiction of that. Well, more on that in class. So there's this influence of Enlightenment ideas, like Locke and Rousseau's, which we'll see more of in the next slide. And there was also the influence of the American Revolution. They saw it was possible to throw off a king and have a government that wasn't an absolute monarchy. So here's how these ideas led to revolution. So here's the Enlightenment ideas. So Locke had this idea that everyone has the rights to life, liberty, and property. Um, and as people became to believe they deserved those rights, the revolutionary leaders were able to accuse the king, clergy, nobility of taking away those rights by force, which meant that they could accuse them of something really powerful and meaningful, like natural rights are being taken away. And then Rousseau had this idea that government exists because of a general agreement that it should exist, this social contract. Um, and the revolutionaries, as a result, felt justified in um, taking the government down if most people no longer agreed it was legitimate. So then, here's the events. Here's what actually happened. So the king had called the Estates General, which is like their legislative body, but didn't have a lot of power, but it could raise taxes. Um, and then, because he didn't like what the third estate was saying, he kicked them out of the meeting, the third estate, as in like everyone who's not the nobility or the clergy. And so those people who were excluded took the tennis court oath, which was the um, this oath that they were going to stay, even though the king had told them to leave, until their demands were met. And it led directly into this revolution, um, where then the people living in Paris got involved, just the general people, and they stormed this political prison called the Bastille and freed some prisoners there, though there were not many. Uh, and then, as part of this process of now that the, the people had taken control of the streets of Paris, they managed to get King Louis the, uh, 16th and his wife, Marie Antoinette, back into the city and accused them of crimes and put them on trial and then had uh, Louis XVI executed. So this is another regicide, just like King Charles I in England. And after that, there was this time called the Reign of Terror, where a man named Maximilien Robespierre and a number of other figures basically went a little chop-happy? They cut off a lot of heads. Uh, they killed a lot of people for being enemies of this revolution. And uh, it was just a kind of a scary time, and we'll simulate that in class in a very responsible way. You can see up here, this is the Reign of Terror. There's a lot of heads being cut off. There's a guillotine, which is used for removing said heads. So out comes the French Revolution. The monarchy falls and is never the same again. Um, France experiments with democracy and secularism because they're reacting against the priest's uh, role in keeping the third estate down. And... But that doesn't actually last all too long. And Napoleon eventually uh, removes that democratic government and declares himself emperor. He was this powerful general who was very successful um, and manages to become an emperor where once there were kings. Monarchs, really. So here's the big picture for arts and technology. In the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries uh, brought many changes in the arts, literature, and political philosophy. The age of reason witnessed inventions and innovations in technology that stimulated trade and transportation. So to clarify, let me tell you right here, the age of reason a lot of times is either the same as or significantly overlaps with the Enlightenment. Um, sometimes the age of reason is used to include Enlightenment and scientific revolution and a bunch of other little sections there. But generally, this time period where it's you're trying to observe the world and think very systematically, that's this age of reason. So first, let's talk about the arts before we get to the technology. 
Um, Johann Sebastian Bach was a composer from Germany, and he wrote in a Baroque style. Baroque, as in like broke, but Baroque. And then Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, also from Germany, a classical composer. And to be clear, at this time, Germany was a collection of a bunch of like little tiny states. It wasn't a big unified country, but generally they're from that area, and you need to know that for the SOL. But let's take a listen to some of their music. So we're going to take a little listen break. Here's uh, Johann Sebastian Bach's Wikipedia page. We'll listen to Cello Suite Number 1 in G Major. Let's take a little music break. You can hear it's very intricate. It's very interesting. It's like... And that's what Baroque is. It's all about lots of uh, very intricately arranged notes all working against one another, especially in um, full concert music. And here's Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's page. And he wrote this opera called Don Giovanni, which we're going to listen to the overture from. Okay. So you can hear it's like very powerful, right? It's like, yeah. Comes it again. So it's very powerful and passionate. This music is different. Instead of like, it's very powerful and passionate and interesting and innovative in its own way. And I'll let you listen to it. Yeah, it's quiet. Not going to spend too long. I highly recommend both of those composers. I studied a lot of music in college. Okay, here's uh, some in innovations in literature. Uh, Miguel de Cervantes uh, from Spain wrote Don Quixote, the first European novel. You can see a picture of him here. He was a man who really wanted to be a knight, was really terrible at it. So, not Cervantes, the Don Quixote. That's Don Quixote. All right, so Voltaire, who was from France, wrote Candide, a uh, biting satire of the figures and customs of the day. In visual arts, um, Eugène Delacroix was from France, and he painted things that depicted classical subjects, as in like Roman and Greek gods, but also public events, uh, natural scenes, and everyday living people, which was at least an extension of what the Renaissance had done. But he also began the transition to romantic painters instead of very representative and classical-focused painters. Here's an example of one of his more famous works called Liberty Leading the People. This is a depiction of the French Revolution after the fact. And um, there's a woman carrying a French flag, and it's very dramatic. And there's, look at this lighting. It's lighting on her for some reason and not on these other people. And um, that was really the focus of this romantic painting, that you have um, uh, using light to focus emotion in particular areas as well. And so technology also improved during this time period, particularly economic technology for Europe. All-weather roads improved year-round transportation and trade, as in roads that you could actually go on all year instead of dirt roads, which get ruined in the spring when it's all wet and muddy. Uh, and new designs in farm tools, like the seed drill, developed by Jethro Tull, which you can see up here, increased the productivity of farms, and this led to an agricultural revolution, like we talked about with the potato. And improvements in ship design made it way easier to transport stuff, which ended up making those mercantile empires even more powerful. 